Okay, uh, welcome back to a video. We have not been on the channel for a while. Uh, it's been many months since we've actually put out a video, but we're back because lockdown is easing, so we can actually get down the workshop and actually do stuff. Today, we're on the Mini again. So for you Mini fanboys, we've had a lot of uh, chat on our recent videos that we've put up. So we're back on Rob's Mini, um, back on the John Cooper Works, and why are we back, Rob? Need some new brake discs and some yes. brake pads because so, like uh, what I did earlier so uh, the side of the disc that you can see not too bad not too bad bit of a lip bit of a lip but nothing crazy this is where it gets fun mm -hmm. uh, there's not much uh, mm -hmm. there's not much left there Rob is there so no so um, I don't know if this is common but uh, I'll show you the brake pads um, that we took off these are actually yellow stuff even though they're green um, the yellow stuff pads so this was uh, the face that was outer uh, and these were only new uh, relatively sort of early last year eight months ago I'd say. eight months ago and that's the one that was on the other side so it's wrecked it massively and actually Rob just before lockdown again heard a very loud grinding sound which we now know to be uh, some of the back of the disc coming off yeah and it's actually come more has come off as we've been here and taken the actual disc off, so um, so I could probably pull it off with my finger now. Um, so yeah, that's not good. So today we're changing uh, discs and pads because the other one is like it as well. So we'll talk you through that. Um, so the things you'll need, obviously, new brake discs. So these are from Pagid or Pagid, however you want to say it. Um, it is a German company, so it's an OE company, um, and this is um, the disc. They look silver, that's because they are silver, they're painted, and they have a special uh, surface uh, on them that prevents corrosion. Um, you do not take this off, you do not wipe it, um, leave it as is. Uh, this will become more apparent later in the video. Um, you'll need new brake fluid because we're doing a complete brake fluid change. Uh, they recommend Castrol Dot 4, which are fine. So, we've got Castrol Dot 4, so you'll probably need at least a litre because we're doing a complete flush of the system as well. Um, uh, you'll also need sort of a syringe to go along with that because to take the rest out. Um, the, the usual hammers. So I've got a selection here for different applications. A wire brush, um, half inch and three eighths ratchet. Um, a H6 Allen key on a three eighths drive. You also need an 18 uh, mil socket. Got a mini pry bar just for those sticky situations and getting the brake pads out. We've got a set of mole grips, pliers, um, a small, very small screwdriver. So. Uh, we've got a range of punches, a 10mm on a 3.8 um, extension bar, a half inch extension bar, and an 11mm, which will be used for bleeding the brakes at the end. Um, we've got a self bleeder because this actually proved actually sort of crucial. You can buy one of these for about £20 off uh, eBay in there. Um, you dump all of the, the dot 4 into it, and then it will bleed it after and that made a world of a difference because when we were doing the other side uh, that you've just seen um, we uh, encountered a lot of air in the lines so I don't know if that was from us or actually from actually just taking so much out um, but this was sort of a godsend that we couldn't actually get sort of all of the air out it took a, a while so it actually took up that's probably Half a can coke can worth, so probably about 150 millimeter, uh, 150 milliliters. So that's why you'll need the full liter. Also, you'll need brake pads. We've gone for Mintex Racing, uh, the M1144 series. So 
Uh, this is sort of their fast road going car, especially being a John Cooper works and the uh, that Rob is, he drives it like a um, So, the, the one sticking point that you'll probably find is if you've got this kit, you won't actually be able to use it. Um, you need the one that is sort of a ratchet and two plates. Unfortunately, we don't have that. So we're gonna blur out what we're gonna do, but it doesn't entail G clamps. That's all I'm saying. Um, because that is that is the wrong way of doing it. But it can be done that way. You also need brake cleaner. So we've got a nice worth spray bottle. You will find with uh, spray bottles that if you just use a normal one, uh, it will melt. So we've got a nice worth one that has been battered and been round. Um, so. We also use the Halfords torque wrench, so this is about £110. Um, also got um, a Bosch Impact just to speed things up. Uh, and we've got our new uh, laser nylon 17mm um, socket for the wheel nuts, um, which is very nice actually, it's got a bit dirty. Uh, also, locking wheel nut, so that's sort of sort of the greatest what, or the stuff you'll need if you don't have anything like that. A good long half inch um, uh, sort of uh, ratchet. So this is this isn't. I think it's 800 mil. So it's a long it's a long boy. Um, but this is 20 quid off eBay. And to be fair, this I uh, we've put some stress through this. Had it bending and everything, and it's it's brilliant. So you don't need the best stuff. You don't need Mac. You don't need this. Uh, you don't need snap on and what have you. Like I do have a snap on screwdriver right here, but. Just there looking pretty. Um, yeah, so all these tools are very sort of basic. Um, obviously, the impact isn't. We just treated ourselves earlier last year to it. Um, but yeah, we'll take you along to uh, get this off. So we also got a nail mat because kneeling on concrete at, in five degrees is not fun. So we'll get on with this. We're also trying out a new camera. So, not this one you're seeing now, but the next clip you'll see is on our new GoPro Hero 8 Black Edition, uh, which hopefully we'll be using the rally car. Also on the uh, open road um, sort of runs. So we've got a new club called the Open Road Club, and uh, Rob has set this up, so uh, I'll be along with him. Uh, I'll be filming actually, and Rob will be mostly doing the driving. But yeah, so if you haven't seen, my new car is behind Rob. Um, it's a free, so it's, it's a bit very dirty at the moment, and it's also got a cracked windscreen. Um, so yeah, so. So you'll need the 17 millimeter. Um, these are after, uh, aftermarket wheel bolts. Um, so we have cracked them off previously. Uh, if you forget to, after you've jacked it up, we have got it under a jack stand at the moment. Just another there. We've actually done it off the uh, cast part of the aluminium arm, so we just jacked it up there. Um, yeah, so you'll need a 17 millimeter socket and a half inch breaker bar or uh, ratchet like we've got over there. Um, if you if you do forget to sort of undo it, get a friend and get him to sit in the uh, in the car. And then we'll just take it off with the impact as we... So, it will look slightly different, different if you don't have spacers. So we actually have this uh, spacer that got that Rob got put on uh, by Deutschtech, so these can seize on, uh, like this one had, the other one wasn't, so well, you might need just to tap it, um, tap a screwdriver back down the, there just to pry it off. So it So these are hub centric rins, that's why they um, uh, were a bit tight. Also there's a little bit of surface corrosion you can see there. Um, so these have been lubed up but uh, we can actually uh, use the wire brush, get all that off, get some brake cleaner around it and then uh, use some copper grease 
and then they'll, they should never stick like they have done. So we'll pop this to one side along with the wheel bolts. Because even though this has an LSD, uh, it is still free floating, so I still can turn the disc because um, it's an electronic uh, one. So we need that H6 Allen key for this here. Our two 18s are at the back, which Rob just showed you a minute ago. Uh, we've got two bleed nipples on this, um, on this caliper. We've got one at the front uh, and we've got one at the back, uh, the mirror image. Uh, these are the 11 mil spanners. That's what we're gonna use the 11 mil for. Um, but first things first, we're gonna get the pads out uh, and go from there. So uh, this is where we'll need the hammer and the punches to get them out. Okay, so now we've got a range of punches, although this isn't, um, this one isn't thin enough. I think we need a, an eighth inch punch, that's really what, is what we require. Um, so I'm just gonna need a tapered flat one, and also a screwdriver, it isn't the best, um, but there's just two little holes, one here and one here. So there again and there again, and all we'll do is get it first because get it with this one first because it's uh it's got the greatest surface area and a bit more st stability um but as you can see like it's very tight in the hole anyway um okay and then wiggle it out because then that's broken free we do the, the same one on the back it out. Now we can use the screwdriver. Um, so this is where you would need a pair of pliers or more grips to grip onto this and just pull it out. So give it a bit of a twist in motion because there is a bit of corrosion on here. This side's a bit easier. So that's the spring-loaded uh, um, sort of tensioner for the pads to try and force them out. Wiggle, keep wiggling, keep wiggling. Um, although this is slightly easier because you've got the cutout for the gearbox. There you go, there's the first pin out. Second pin will be a little bit easier, but because of the surface corrosion you'll still need uh, the more grips. So setting that to one side safely. Um, and same thing again. So that, keep this because you don't actually get a replacement. We'll just clean this up with a bit brake cleaner and we'd be sorted. Sorted. Okay, from there, we're gonna pull, get the uh, wear sensor off, um, which they actually clip here. We're not replacing the wear sensor because it isn't actually damaged. No, I broke. So, okay, so we just used the, um, the little small screwdriver. So this is the wear sensor. So um, we're probably close to it, but uh, we'll look at the state of the pad. This is a very easy um, changeover. Um, so we'll we'll just leave this dangling and out of the way for the moment. Okay, so we've got an 18 inch socket, 18 mil socket with uh, the extension on it. This is to undo the um, uh, the caliper bolts. So we're going to leave the pads in. They'll fall out in a minute. So it gets a bit tight around here. That's why we undid the uh, wear sensor so it wasn't in the way. So we're actually going to pop it up here just to get it out of the way further. It gets a bit tight because we're quite low. If we're on a ramp or something, it'd be slightly different, but. There's one. Okay, so the bottom bolt is now out. Um, 
I recommend using something like this. This is what actually comes off a exhaust replacement. This is what they hang off. Um, so we're actually going to we're uh, going to repurpose this, and all we're going to do is hit, uh, hook it on the uh, the, the spring, and actually going to uh, hold the caliper up with this while we deal with the disc. Um, you can use a zip tie and stuff like that, but I don't trust them because they've had a couple fall, and especially with the four pop calipers, they can be quite heavy, um, especially with the lines and stuff attached. I just don't want to put too much strain on anything, so that's what I've got like there. You can use an old coat hanger, uh, like the traditional old um, sort of uh, wire ones. You can cut them up, which I do that for spraying. Um, as you can see, this one was used for spraying. I think this was spraying my calipers uh, for the 205. We'll get on with this. So, top tip. Um, you gotta pull and push. Pull push to try and push the calipers back uh, you would have to do a wiggling motion as well because because we've got actually a lip here to free the caliper up okay there you go at this stage this is where we'll pull the pads out Oh, lovely. Okay, there's one out. So that's okay, like the other one. This is quite worn. <laughs> so yes, this one's quite worn and has many ridges in it. So this this is good, the fact that we caught this now, because this is very, very close to the whereabout, as you can see. Um, but yeah, so, as you can see, there's a clear difference between that pad and that pad. So we'll pop this upside down. out of the way and we're trying to not chip the paint as well so now we've got the uh, the ratchet this is actually a snap on one I know you don't need the best but it, this is a 12 inch one um, so just to get this little bit of leverage this is where we'll need the allen key as well and also the trusty hammer so what I'm doing here is because this is free spinning and we can't actually uh, stop this you've actually got to jolt it so that's why I'm so now that just breaks it loose so it's this okay you want to keep this sometimes you get these uh, brand new ones but because uh, these seem to be wet, uh, very good and also they seem to be hardened as well um, yeah they're 10.9 if you can see that so these will these will round with brake difficulty, especially with the amount of torque that we're going to put on them as well. So the disc won't come off. So the best thing to do is get the tap from behind, spin it a touch. There you go. So I have my legs here just in case it did drop, but. As you can see, this is even worse. So, what the hell happened? that's quite bad. Okay, so after that debacle, they're, they're quite f Rob. That's why we changed them. So, remember, remember lads Check and the girls. Because the, the scary that's... thing is that on the far, on the front, they're fine. They look all right. There, there's a bit, of, a bit of a lip. But then when we ran our finger around the back, we felt it was rough, but we didn't quite realise how rough. Yeah, so this is basically a cheese grater to the pad. So <laughs> everyone, please run your finger on the back of your discs and just make sure. Because those pads have been on the car a year, 
and look at the difference in thickness between the rear and the front. Like the rear and front side so of the disc. This is the rear, this is the front. And look at it, it that's ridged. That, that was basically it's a cheese been, It's been chewing on that. So. That's scrap. So, all we're going to do is clean up this surface. We're going to get the wire brush. We're going to get the wire brush, get all the surface corrosion off here. It doesn't have to be accurate, but something's better than nothing. Then we're going to drop a um, piece of, or a bit, some of uh, copper slip around here. So if we ever have to do this again, um, we probably won't be able to do it or won't have to do them. Um, but yeah, from there, then we'll put the, pop the disc on, pop the retaining uh, screw on, and then we'll um, clean the caliper and go from there. So this is quite good, but we're just uh, gonna go around it. Gonna do the same thing with the uh, brake cleaner again on a nice clean surface. Blue roll and then just wipe over just so there's no grime or anything. So, you've got a nice clean surface to go off from. Then, we're gonna get to the cop obviously. So, got a touch, we just want to run a little bit. And so, why are we putting this on? This is just to help and aid getting the disc off at a later date because these are concealable items. Although we're not putting it on anything else um, other than mating surfaces. So this all it does is a hub centric ring to keep it uh, centered to everything else. This is just this will just allow a little bit of uh, protection from any uh, surface corrosion that might occur in the future. Just like that. <laughs> um, so be careful these are heavy. Lifting your knees, unlike what I did. So this is how you'll get the disc. Sometimes on older steel discs, um, you will actually have them oiled up in a bag, um, and that's where you actually need the brake cleaner. But this is a new type of disc, um, and this is how the OEM uh, companies like to do it. So they're, they're painted uh, with a special kind of paint, so everything else is protected other than that braking surface and once you've bed the pads in that paint is gone so do be careful when you're going to brake straight away because you won't have the full surface um because you'll be scratching this off so we'll pop this on if you wanted to change gloves now you can do but we're going to get dirty later anyway so pick it up by the fins at the back and then on the side uh, I'm going to position the actual sort of the, this lock uh, sort of bolt to the top so this is easy to locate. So there you go. Very simple. Okay. So we'll pop this back. it by hand so we're not cross threading anything so give it a bit of a wiggle so. same time as last time this is all it is is a retaining screw and it won't back out because in our case the space is here so it won't back out and also the wheel is there uh, it doesn't matter if it uh, backs out because I don't even have them on the Peugeot. Um, somebody's cut them off and that's uh, so I can actually change the discs very quickly. So these is just an OEM thing. Um, so simple as. So that's done with now. So now we don't want to touch the face of the disc with our oily hands. Um, if you need to uh, wipe the disc, you can use a little bit of brake cleaner, but you're not trying to take the coating off. You're just trying to get rid of the smears. So there is a little bit. So the next thing you want to do is uh, sort of clean the caliper. So of any contaminants, just because uh, we're already here, so we might as well. So we're gonna use the same 
sort of cloth because we don't need anything new. Uh, need anything new because we're going to get it dirty anyway. We're going to do it in this position as it sits now because we don't want to coat the um, the disc. Uh, you can do it when it's so. Previously, we rebolted it back on. So I'm just going to just uh, localize any mess. I'm just going to throw some on here and then just wipe the inside of the caliper for about every orifice. to clean up any sort of loose rust or anything like that or any loose uh, sort of brake dust clean the brake we'll give it a good once over we'll clean the rest of it later so okay um this is where we're not going to use g-clamps to push it back um you will need to use not two g-clamps um, you also need the brake reservoir cap open. Um, we're actually going to apply, um, put our uh, blade breeder kit on, so if it does spill, uh, it's got somewhere to go, um, which it shouldn't do. Okay, so we're not using G clamps. These are not G clamps. <laughs> so um, this is an illusion. This is an illusion. You don't see G clamps, and you don't see gaffer tape on the end of the G clamp. So what we're going to do is basically use these as uh, brake rewind tools and rewind the caliper back. They are actually pushed out. If you have a look, so they're a little bit proud. They should be flush with this seal. Uh, same on the inside as well. So inside first and then we'll do the outside. But if you do one, you'll push the other one out. So that's why you need to. If you did have the proper tool, it'd be a lot easier uh, because it'd just be a ratcheting motion. So just do be careful because you don't want to blow out the seals. So sorry about the noise because it is a working farm. There's a lot of people on here. So, okay. <laughs> These are both flush now, so as you can see, these are slightly proud, um, and then we're going to push them in. So if you can see, they're now flush. So undo the non-G clamps, uh, and uh, so we did that just to protect the edge of the caliper. Previously, if you had the ratcheting type where it swayed out, um, it's a lot easier. Um, but as we said, we got the wrong tool, so. We've got to improvise, so even the, even the best of us has to improvise. So, next thing, uh, we're going to do this. You've got to be a bit more careful. So there you go, there's, there's the sort of how we're doing it and now we're going to push the next one in. So It's a bit of a balancing act because it's a bit tight in here, especially with all the, the wear sensor and what have you. Um, so.
So these are all pushed back. So now we can, uh, we're just gonna give it a bit more clean uh, with brake cleaner. Doesn't need to be spotless, but we just want the sort of the crud away. So we will need the uh, the wire brush again. So where you'll need to wire brush, be careful of these seals because you'll need a steel wire brush. Uh, is is these faces here? So the face here. Uh, there's also a face here. There's also a face here. So, so face there. Uh, if you come around, Rob, there's a face there. Um, also one there, one there. So this is, these are the uh, sort of seating faces uh, for the pads. So, um, so all we're going to do is give it a bit of a, a rub off. So be careful of the, so we don't apply pressure to the seal because we don't want to burst the seal because they are under high pressure because it is hydraulics. So all we're going to do again is brake cleaner again because brake cleaner is our friend. Bit of a clean sort of area. And wipe those faces again. Hello Ruby. So wipe this back over. We're going to clean the paddock, uh, the sort of everywhere again. Then you want the two bolts. I'm going to spin it over uh, the actual caliper. So this side of the caliper sits the, uh, the disc side. Lose this little clip like we did. It's very tiny. This is the wear sensor, pad wear sensor. We're going to buy some new ones because uh, these are actually pretty uh, run down. So that's uh, this is it. Uh, so that's the actual sensor part. This needs to face the uh, the disc. So this will basically slot over there, but we're going to pop it into the pad first, just like, just like so. Then squeeze it and then pop it in, as, push it as far as possible. Then this um, goes on top. It, these can be a little bit tough. So, it's... <laughs> okay, so we're going to try it a different way and actually put it on the wear sensor. So that works better. So as you can see, it's fairly worn. So we're actually gonna buy a new one because we didn't realize that this uh, this required one. So we'll uh, buy another one. So we'll slide this pad back in. Okay, so perfect. So we actually, so we want not the little holes, but we want the big holes lining up with the holes that the pins go through. So the next pad needs to go in. Simple as. The next thing we require is the pins. We're just going to drop them uh, with a bit of um, on a bit of sandpaper just to clean them up. And then they'll slide in a little bit better. You only need to do these faces because the center doesn't actually get um, uh, is actually sort of a, a smaller diameter, and that won't actually affect them sliding in. Same, same as this side. And then we're going to do it on the other one as well. So they're as good as what we want. So all we're going to do is slide them in the back where the holes are. Pop them through. Okay, you only want to um, do them a little bit. Because then we need to get the spring plate. So we're just going to give this a bit of a brake clean as well. Because just to give everything a bit of a brake clean to get any surface corrosion or brake dust off. So, 
this all get also gets hot, so the new rag. Nope, we're fine there. So this is as good as we're getting it. We're not this this side uh, faces the actual uh, pad and uh, disc. Um, so the best thing to do is get the bottom in first. So all we want to do is slide it through the little bit of a tab here, like shown. Okay, then we want it through the other side as well. So this is where we might need to wiggle everything. Um, also, we might need a bit of a tap with a hammer as well. So, so there you go. So, okay. So, tap it in. The reason we're using a soft mallet or a shot mallet is so that we're not damaging the paint or anything. Okay, so this will flop down, doesn't matter. Okay, so we want to pull the other pin out. This is where it gets a bit tough. So luckily this is spring steel. So all we're gonna do is do the same thing, but okay. Okay, so, okay, you wanna press your thumb against here and get the next little bit in wiggle. Okay, so you want to press and then hit through the hammer. Okay, we also need to position the pad as well. So there you go, simple as. These only stick out a little bit, so this is flush. This needs a little bit more of a tap. There you go. So, and the wear sensor drops underneath the brake. Uh, pipe and slides back on there. So as I said, we are going to change these probably next week um, But they are as simple as uh, There's a bit of a fitting here and you just basically replace the whole thing so Okay So that's all that done. So that's both clips uh, Both pins and the clip back in uh, Now we're gonna get uh, the caliper torqued because we want everything torqued to the correct spec the, this is uh, 110 newton meters uh, on the 18 mil half inch socket. So we're going to use a 18 mil um, torque wrench, uh, and we'll do that. Whee! <laughs> okay, so we've got the Halfords advanced. Um, so we're going to set this to 110 newton meters. So the way to do it is to get it close on the scale, which is there, and then we've got a set of numbers. So there you go, and then just click it back into place. So, so there you go. Okay, we're going to get under the car and uh, torque talk this back down. You don't need the extension for this one, but you will for the top one. <laughs> nice. Professional. Okay, so we have actually uh, bled them now. Um, we use the brake leader, so all you do is pressurise it. Open uh, the 11 mil on this side, open the 11 mil on this side, obviously separately with the bottle. Um, and you let it out until you see a decent amount of fluid. Uh, you should see the fluid change through this sort of opaque um, tubing. Uh, so it will go from sort of, this was a sort of a, a very dehydrated piss sort of look. That's what it looks like. So it's very deep, sort of a, it's a, it's a stellar, it's a, it's a wife beater kind of uh, 
Stella. <laughs> Good description. Yeah, he's sort of, or or a strongbow sort of. Look. Yeah, strong. I like strongbow. A strongbow sign of uh, cider. What colour is it meant to be? Uh, like very very yellow, like very faint yellow piss. That's what it's sort of. Okay. Yes, I can't really describe it other than it's not meant to look like this. Mm -hmm. So this is probably probably four years old, four or five, or actually six years old. You probably haven't had a brake um, yeah. fluid change, so we have done it. We've obviously we use the Castrol Dot Four. Um, so these kits are about twenty pounds on eBay. They're worth the money in gold. So you can do anything from um, uh, from clutches to uh, to brakes. So they, it allows you to bleed brakes uh, without having a, another person in the car pushing the pedal. Um, and all you do is let the so you pressurise it at that end on the actual master cylinder. Crack this open, which is 11 mil. It would. It's just sat sat under this panel there, which will pop on in a minute. Um, and then undo it with 11 millimeter spanner. We did because uh, it's they're renowned for rounding. They are. So I used the ring end on here, and because it was a bit tight, I used the secondary spanner method to just crack it off uh, so I did that so it gives you a bit more leverage and also you're not around it because you've got six points of engagement um, because this has never been bled it's going to be quite seized in there so you've got to be quite confident and give it a bit of a yank um, even if you want to give it a bit of a tap with a hammer like I did um, you can always use the shot mallet so that's sort of really good because you can do it gentle or light or what have you uh, so sort of gentle uh, to just just uh, break that um, seal. Okay, so as we were really interrupted, we're going to pop the uh, spacer back on. I'll just put some copper grease around here. So because this is, uh, this is sort of multi-pitched, uh, this can go anywhere. So all we're going to do is realign it to where it previously was put on, um, which is like that. So pushes straight on. I have cleaned the inside, I've cleaned the outside, although it doesn't look it, that's just a sort of discoloration of the anodizing. So we'll have the wheel on next uh, and the actual wheel bolts, we're using extended wheel bolts uh, from Bimec, same ones as the spacers uh, and they are torqued to 140 newton meters. Um, so you better just nipping them up with the gun and then uh, torquing it down. You won't need an extension for this because, especially with the spacers, they're so far out, out you won't hit the actual arch. So next thing, we'll get the uh, then we'll get the wheel off. Okay, so I do it slightly differently to other people. People just whack them on, but because these are hub centric, they'll actually locate. I've got the bolts and the uh, locking wheel nuts and the gun here, so. Um, I'm actually resting it on both legs and I'm actually going to shimmy it towards the wheel. It allows us to sort of, uh, other than removing the torch, um, allows us to line this up as much as possible, or best as possible, because the actual spacers spin as well and you've got to get them aligned. So. That's all we're going to do is uh, do that. We're, this won't torque it to any sort of spec, so we're definitely going to uh, to do it with the torque wrench. Um, but yeah, as you can see, Rob had a bit of an ouchie and yeah, wheel. Um, so these will be these will be re-diamond cut uh, shortly, I reckon. So let's get on with torquing the wheel. Okay, so it's set to 140 again. So now, so I'm going to do them in a star pattern. 
This one is the locking minute. Sorted. So that's both, so that's all of them done. Uh, we're keeping the bonnet up because we're going to bleed the, the rear brakes just to get any air out that potentially could be in there. Uh, but after that, then the uh, the car's done. So yeah, um, thank you for watching. And if you've got any questions or comments about the process that we undertook um, today, as as always, pop them in the description. Like and subscribe, check our uh, other socials out because we do post there. Um, we try and post there probably once a week or what have you, while we're doing. Um, uh, yeah, thank you. And swipe.